you hear me? Can you hear me? There are so many familiar faces and so many new faces. I'm so excited to see you all. And I can't see everyone because we have pages and pages of people, which is super fun. Well, thank you guys for being here today. Um, first of all, I'm just thrilled with the number of attendees that registered and the number of people that are online today. Um, I think we're gonna have a great conversation. This is a conversation. It's not a webinar or a lecture, but really an opportunity for us to collectively learn from each other. I have just a few housekeeping items before we get started or as we get started today. Um, first, everyone was defaulted into mute, but like I said, it's a conversation. So if you want, you can unmute yourself. If you wanna ask a question or respond to something that someone's saying, or feel free to type in the chat box, which is on the right side of your screen. It's also at the bottom of your screen next to the green share button. It says chat, and so you can use that as well. Um, so that's a little bit of housekeeping today. This is my first time hosting a virtual roundtable, so I hope y'all can give me a little bit of grace as we go through this together. Um, shout out to the people with really cool backgrounds. I am seeing some neat ones, and those just make me happy. Um, so I'm excited to see those. Um, so as we get started today, I want to share with you a little bit about um, what we're here to talk about. So our roundtable topic is, in my opinion, incredibly reactive, but really timely. I believe that self-care is more important now than it ever was before as we work to find our new normal amidst, this, amidst the chaos that we're living in, I firmly believe that we must work and parent and lead and love from a place of well-being and not a place of anxiety and stress, which I'm not sure if anyone else on the call has felt it lately, but I have certainly felt my fair share of some anxiety. Um, so before we begin, I wanted to tell you a little bit about my background. So I currently am a consultant speaker and founder of SLC Wellbeing. I also co-chair the NURSA Health and Wellbeing Task Force and serve on the board of directors for the National Consortium for Building Healthy Academic Communities. And I also serve on the Campus Wellbeing Advisory Council for the American Cancer Society, Jed Foundation, and Partnership for Healthier America. I have a lot of fitness and wellness certifications, um, most relevant to our conversation today. I am a certified wellness practitioner, a certified health coach, a registered yoga teacher, and I also hold a resilience and thriving facilitator credential. Um, so I've shared a little bit about me, but I'd love to learn about each of you. Due to the number of people on our call, I think it would be awesome if perhaps we could just type your name, um, kind of who you are, where you work, what you do, um, in the chat box. And I see there's already some great chats happening right now. It's fun seeing some names and faces that I am familiar with, and I appreciate some personal hellos, so it's fun to hear from you guys. Y'all, we have quite the crew here today. I can't even keep up. I don't know if your chat box is like mine, but it keeps telling me how many new messages there are. Well, as those keep coming in, um, I appreciate hearing from you guys. I'd love it if um, I'm kind of thinking about how we're going to go through with our conversation today. Um, I'd love it if you could share a little bit, maybe in the chat box, about why you're here today. Like kind of what drew you into this conversation?
So we're seeing some good ones, trying to find balance during this time, um, hearing from others around the country with how they're dealing with the new normal, resources for staff and students. Best practices without social connectivity right now. There's so much good stuff. Feeling some battle fatigue. Yes, depressed and anxious people are getting potentially worse as the crisis makes things hopeless. And missing Nursa. Aww. Well, I really appreciate you guys sharing a little bit about what drew you in. So I mentioned a little bit earlier today about my background as it relates to resilience. And I wanted to kind of start our conversation there. And as we start our conversation talking about resilience, I wanted to offer a shared definition of resilience. So resilience is the ability to withstand, recover, and grow in the face of stressors and changing demands. And so I think it's important, a lot of times we hear resilience um, having a lot of different definitions, but where we are right now, and we think about this idea of withstanding, it's the idea that we are dealing and coping with our challenge. And I think we all know the challenge that we are all um, collectively experiencing right now with the coronavirus pandemic. Um, recovering is this idea where we bounce back and we can grow. So that's the part of resilience that everyone usually talks about, we bounce back, but we don't necessarily have conversations about how we have to withstand and cope before. And then how we grow, we kind of thrive in the face of adversity. And I think it's important to acknowledge this because when we consider where we are personally, where our members and our students may be and our coworkers and colleagues might be, it's not just bouncing back. There's a lot to grieve right now as social distancing and shelter in place has created a loss for us. And some of us might be actually grieving canceled events or vacations or conference presentations. Um, and Others of us might actually just be grieving the loss of routine and normalcy. And so as we begin more of our conversation together, my question for us as a group, and really only if you're comfortable sharing, is what are you grieving right now? Is it something when you think in the midst of the crisis, is it something that um, that you feel comfortable sharing. You can put it in the chat box, or if you feel like unmuting muting yourself, we'll start our conversation there today. Lots of chit chat, Michelle. I feel you. I'm an extrovert. Lots of human contact, interactions with others, loss of the gym to work out. Amen normal tea, personal time to myself. Caroline, I feel you. Hey, Stacy, I'll go ahead and start talking with the out loud bit. Um, I'm really missing my seniors and the loss of this last semester with them to help them celebrate um, all the traditions they're used to at our university. I'm kind of bummed about that. I'll also add, Stacy, that I'm Grieving other people's situations, um, I actually had the fortune of my 92-year-old grandmother pass before the social distancing, and we were able to share and celebrate her life, but also grieve together. And that was actually a blessing that it happened. So for individuals, even if I don't know them, that um, have situations, whether it's the coronavirus or not, if they do pass, just how emotionally disturbing that can be that you can't even spend their last lugs of their life with them, and then you can't actually gather for a funeral or a viewing. It's really saddening, and it's hard because I think my wife and I have been talking about our blessings, because we have privilege, and we have a dual parent family, and we have children with technology that they know how to use it, and so I think that's the big thing now is for those that have the privileges to be 
super thankful and blessed, even though we're stressed out and my hair's turning gray. Um, but I think that counting our blessings is very important during the time of grieving and, and being empathetic to other people's situations, people that got to go into work for hospitals or essential workers or people that have been impacted directly by the virus. Um, I'm just going to jump on to that kind of topic because what we're doing um, at Stanford University right now, one of my friends is a nurse in San Diego and she's seeing all the um, patients in the hospital that are by themselves um, that might be fighting cancer that may be passing away on them uh, by themselves and so we're sending them letters um, unread or unopened or unsealed sorry unsealed general letters um, to anyone. They could be pictures. If you have children, you can um, have them color pictures. If you have dogs, you can send a picture of your dog and like have them do their paw print or whatever. Um, quotes, coloring pages. We're just sending them whatever to my friend. And um, then she's going to hand kind of pick um, and kind of try to give them to the patients. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. So if anyone wants more information on that, I'd love to have as many people help out because that is a big Topic, my grandpa passed away from cancer right before this all happened. So again, I was grateful to be able to, to be with my grandpa, but now they're, they're closing all that off, so. Anyone else have anything they wanna share? Um, if cool. you're missing the opportunity to present at NURSA, we are still hosting a virtual CSC this year, and we're looking for people who are interested in presenting on topics virtually. So uh, let me know if you're interested. Thanks, Catherine, for that. Yeah, I think in general, our students and us in recreation are so social that that's a big piece that is is hurting. And when we've when we brought students in, we're still not you know in shelter in place or anything in my place. And and um, so we've brought a handful of students in where they can maintain social distancing. It's like constantly telling them stay away from each other because they they just naturally want to really reach out to each other. Um, and so it's a it's a struggle that social piece I think as recreation folks deal with. Well, thank you all for sharing. I think it's important as we strive for well-being and intentionality to acknowledge these losses and those um, emotions that can be kind of easy to push to the side um, in order so that we can move forward to the growth part of that resilience. So I have a question for you guys. So on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel like you are adjusting to all of this? And you can answer in the chat box if you're comfortable, or you can just answer to yourself. Maybe one, like you're barely making it, and 10, like this is the best day of your life. A lot of great, um, a lot of diversity, but in some ways similarity in some of the numbers and responses. I saw, I think it was Caroline, she said it, her number got lower depending on if it was sunny out or not, and I am 100% that person. It's funny, I feel like for me it's moment by moment. Um, I think it depends on what happens in my day, I, but I, what I'm noticing is that my stress response is a lot more 
rapid right now. So for example, for me about an hour before giving the, or facilitating this conversation, I got an email that gave me that my kids are now out of school until April 27th. At least April 27th was actually what the email said, which I know that's a lot. I have three children, so it just, you know, I'm not used to working with so many, used to having coworkers with my same last name in my space all the time. So it's a lot. So I want to ask you guys, as we get to some of the heart of what we are here to talk about today, um, what have you found to be effective in transitioning from what feels like insanity at times to a semblance of normalcy? I'd say trying to keep as close to the original routine as possible, even though it's definitely limited in some states more than others, but anything you can do to make it seem like a normal day uh, really at least helps me feel like things are relatively normal. I think for me, it was about getting, um, in addition to that routine, just reminding myself that this too shall pass, that while there's a lot of upheaval, every there's going to be, we will be able to make it through and get through it. It's just a matter of listening to what we need to do at the moment. I would just say the most important thing that I um, make sure I do is get dressed. I know it's very easy for us to be like in bed and like, oh, well, I'm just gonna roll out of bed. For those of you that still are working remotely, um, for me, I'm like, I need to get dressed. I need to get, I put workout clothes on and then I know I'm going to work out, whether that be walking my dog, whether that be doing beach body on demand, whether that be doing whatever kind of exercise, but making sure that I get up and get dressed and do some sort of activity other than just go straight to work, stay in my pajamas all day. I'll read a few of the comments from the chat box that we have here, because there's some great advice from all of you. Um, communicate with coworkers on when you can or prefer to be reached, whether it's nine to five or if there's different hours. Um, again, making sure you get up and get dressed every day, um, opening the blinds. I feel like that's super helpful. Separating spaces at home and space for work and space for meals and space to relax, space for sleep. Getting outside at least once every day. We've got Disney Plus long walks and going to bed early. being patient, knowing that my interruptions from normal work is now kids and wife, and how to be kind and open to their interruptions and setting schedules and boundaries. So true. Are there, do you guys have any other strategies that you wanna share? I did add an article that I co-published today with Core Health and Fitness where we address um, a, several different tips for organizations and for individuals related to maintaining their well-being during this time. So I've added that on there. So I think we've referenced working from home a lot and I think it's important to acknowledge, I've had some friends that, so I have been in a work from home situation um, for the last six months and that's not usual. And I think these circumstances are not usual work from home because I've been getting texts from former colleagues and friends that are like, is this what it's like to work from home? It's awful. And I think it's important to remember that you don't, this is not normal work from home. Like it's not normal to be in this chaos with lots of potentially other people in your home and having to juggle the art of homeschool and taking care of your household and all the other things. So I do want to acknowledge that. So what I did want to ask the question for, and maybe Erin, if you can hear me on Nurses Smart Board, we have a quick poll um, related to work from home and wanted to get a pulse of um, how many people 
did regularly work from home prior to COVID. So if you can just check yes or check no in the poll and then we'll get some live um, info. Is the poll working for everybody? Okay, good. It's not on my screen anymore. Hey, Erin, is there a way we can show that poll live? So full disclosure, Erin from Nurse HQ and I are experimenting with the poll right now. This is our first time doing it. What I can tell you is Ooh, that 9% yes. have said yes and 91% have said no. 91% have said no. Oh my goodness. Well, I can imagine that this is feeling like quite the adjustment. Thank you, Erin. Um, so what is, we've already kind of given some tips that were just related to how we're doing with this. So what is working for you when it comes to work from home? Like, is there anything, I know we had some folks share already, um, but if anyone wants to discuss those, oh, look, thanks, Erin. Like I said, guys, we're new to all of this. Thank you. Um, so if anybody has any tips that they wanna share about working from home and what, that, what we can do to be successful right now, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, this is Catherine with Loyola University in Chicago. Um, we're not at the point yet where we're being asked to justify our hours, um, but just in case, we're kind of keeping a log of what we worked on each day, um, which kind of helps keep us on online, I guess. It helps us remember like, okay, I need to record that I did something, um, keeps me going, keeps me motivated, um, and then hopefully it will help down the line. Actually, we were mandated to do that in order to justify our work. We could be transferred to another unit if we are not showing our work output for necessary areas. So that's actually been good to virtually see. I just created Google Sheets for our assistant directors to see what they're working on with virtual programs or um, what, could, what we can learn from this as far as being efficient and platforms, maybe consolidation of stuff. But uh, it's actually been good to see that and then also for me i have a track record of what they're working on to justify they don't need to work for another department during this COVID 19 pandemic There's some good tips coming through on chat. Um, one of them is having a separate space to work in that is separate from the rest of the house, if you are able to have that space. Um, writing out a schedule for myself before I start the day. Setting up an office where I can close the door for things like this. Anyone have suggestions for Leah's comment about um, having a comfortable space for kind of ergonomics? The, the only thing that I could say right now is I'm trying to make sure that I stand up a lot more than sit, like I'm in awkward positions because I have a stand up sit down desk at work and like a special chair because I had injured myself before. Um, and so my hips just are not the best. So standing up, sitting down, um, I'm, I'm struggling with the same thing. And I'm very tempted to go back to work and grab my chair or something else that can help me that I normally get. Um, I'm just typing off my laptop right now. So my wrist is hurting a lot more. Um, so just like moving positions um, is all that I've been able to do right now and just stand up, walk around. Um, and Jennifer, I think that's a great tip. I would suggest having a timer every hour to get up, walk around, stretch, maybe do something different 
for like five or 10 minutes before you come back down if you find yourself working in just one long block of time. So some other tips that have come through are also, um, let's see, writing down bullet points of the work I've completed each day, which we kind of talked a little bit about. I like this one, this is creative. I was really missing having two computer screens. So I used a spare TV in our house and hooked it up to my laptop. It makes, it's something small, but makes my workspace feel much more official. We're also sharing our list through Google Docs. Is anybody using any project management software tools like Asana or any of those? If you don't, I highly encourage you, especially if you are in a management position, um, using something like that can be really helpful because you can see your employees progress on what they're doing without having to like constantly check in or have, um, you know, excessive Google Docs or things like that. And it's really efficient and free to use. So that's my plug. They didn't pay me, but I'll give that away for free. Let's see what else. I use Google Keep for my personal to-dos. I use Asana to manage employee tasks. I've been scheduling my day in Outlook and make sure to include walks with the dog to keep me moving and make up for the steps that I'm not getting, walking around the rec center, keeping the TV off while at work, yes. Oh, this is a great ergonomic tip. I don't know if y'all saw it about using a dish towel um, and rolling it up as a wrist pad for typing at the computer. <laughs> This is hilarious. My Zoom office has been in the bathroom. <laughs> Since my kids don't know, you don't have to yell in their Zooms and have the closed door just to let your family know the bathroom is offline. That's, that's so creative, Kevin, I love it. Are you in the bathroom right now? Josh has created a makeshift stand-up desk with shoe boxes supporting the table and lots of books to raise my monitors to keep at things at monitors at almost eye level. Awesome. I use my bar in my apartment as a standing desk. If you don't have that, maybe some boxes or books on your table. Well, some really great tips um, as we adjust to work from home. And I think really, as you are thinking about where you are right now, what do you feel like, oh, there's so many, so much good stuff coming through. I get distracted with the chat feature. Um, what do you feel like you need right now to do for yourself in order to continue to survive slash thrive in this unknown space? This is Leah. I was going to say that there's this part about connecting with the rest of the staff and kind of having a sense of um, how their work is going. Not that you need to know what everybody else is doing, but um, actually having an understanding of how different parts of the department are moving forward, depending on the size of your department. So creating connection points, creating smaller teams that interact and work together more often um, than they typically would, um, you know, in a day, a work day. So um, across different programs, across different services. So that's been really helpful on our team. And then a once a week, for sure, um, team meeting, not um, to check in, but just to see what's going on with everybody. So kind of going off what Leah was saying, what are you all doing to stay engage and prioritizing your staff members sort of personal well-being recognizing that it is this trying time
this is Stephanie from West Virginia University. I oversee a GA and I'm finding myself checking in and giving feedback with her more than I normally do. So even if it's things like this looks great or I love the progress you've made on this, things that I normally wouldn't check in just with that positive stuff, just so she knows I'm there and that I'm seeing it and recognizing what she's doing and I appreciate it. And that seems to be working well for us. I noticed Caroline said um, walking one on ones um, and we were doing one on ones right before this all happened as well with our contingent staff so part time staff. Um, and so we anyone that we didn't finish with we turned into a zoom um, call and we also have group me so a lot of them are reaching out on group me someone's birthday was the other day and he was making himself a cake so. Um, it was just cool uh, giving them the option of like, you don't have to message us or tell us what you're doing, but giving them that option. And they're slowly, as time goes on, starting to integrate, like sending us an email, um, my coordinator and I, and saying, hey, just an update on life. And we, we just open the door for whatever they want to share, whatever they want to do, a baking Zoom call. We'll do a baking Zoom call, whatever, whatever they want to do to kind of keep them connected, because a lot of them are away from um home still as well so yeah i'll just jump in real quick um i did make my team uh that my direct reports we would go on walking one-on-ones for the first 30 minutes of our hour to just catch up on life catch up on their areas and what they were doing um now we do that over the phone um i still ask them to go on a walk with me i have two small children and um, so I have moved everybody's traditional one-on-one -on -one time to 8.30 a.m. Um, of the week. And I load my kids up in the stroller and I put my earbuds in and we go for a walk and I listen to their one-on-one -on -one updates, uh, which has been great. Um, and uh, we've gone even in the rain because mama's got to get outside and uh, get a walk in. So um, my team has been really awesome to do that. And they are also going on the walks when they can uh, with me. Um, and they've been flexible to move their one-on-one -on -one time. So that's been something to really get us out and about. There's some really great tips in the chat box that I hope you guys are reading. Um, just a couple of them that are standing out to me. And Kevin, I feel like this is something that my husband and I are doing too, but checking in each morning or night with his wife. Um, so we know when we need both be, need to be on Zoom or WebEx and how we can keep our kids on track with their schoolwork needs. Um, I'm totally feeling you. I, my kid has three teachers for second grade and they all Zoom every day. And plus, you know, juggling everything else. So it's a lot, um, but scheduling that meeting is invaluable, I truly believe. Yeah, a lot of great tips there. Yeah, a few things that um, I've been thinking a lot about with all of this is the importance of routine, but also flexibility with our routine and recognizing that. And I remember really clearly the day that I was told that school was going to be canceled kind of indefinitely. And it made me feel kind of panicked as to how I was going to live life with my kids at home and trying to work and all of these things at the same time. And so, you know, people were talking about a schedule and I was really hesitant to kind of adopt a schedule for our household just because I personally, individually like to kind of just live my life without a schedule and kind of follow my feet wherever they take me. Um, but with kids, you can't really do that. And so we've been really successful for the last two weeks. We have had a, a schedule. I say really successful. 
I have had a teacher work day a couple times where we haven't done any homeschool work, but I've been successful having a schedule where we kind of plan like this is when we're going to be outside. This is when we're going to be on the computer. This is going to be our time for movement. This is going to be our time to do just different parts of life, which have been helpful for us to kind of coordinate all of our work in between all of that. Um, and it's been amazing to me, like we've even added like an hour of chore time, which I have children that are three, five and seven and they chore time, I think might be their favorite out of all of it. So if nothing else, they might not get a public school education, but they're going to learn to be really good at cleaning. So I'm seeing some good conversation about virtual team building. Does anybody have anything else? I know, Ken, to answer your question, we used, um, when I worked at Georgia Tech with my staff, we used Slack. Um, one of our staff members did it as a part of a um, initiative to build morale. And so we had different Slack channels that we used. Um, so someone had, like they had one on like cooking. I worked with a couple of dietitians and some other people. So cooking was a really popular one where people would post about pictures of what they ate and all of that. And then we had another Slack channel, which I didn't participate in, but people really liked called cats where people would just post pictures of their cats. So I think there's things like that, that that's something I've used that I have seen build community in a virtual way that benefits teams. Anyone else have any virtual team building resources? So I will say, um, when I, so I had an opportunity to work with um, Ken Walters from Core Health and Fitness. And when we were working on this project together, we were talking about and looking at all the different things that campus recreation centers were doing to support well being of their students in a virtual way. And one of the things that we saw actually was from Olympic College. And they uh, actually were posting on their rec center website ways to improve your academic self during this time. And I think that's a really positive way. So when we talk about our teams, they did things like provided different like personality tests for people that were free. They provided a number of different resources on learning a new language and other types of pieces that I think could also translate to things that you could do for your staff to kind of promote this period to grow um, as well. So does anybody have other questions for the group? It's hard for me to keep up with the chat. So one thing to note too, is that after the session's over, there'll be a transcript and a recording posted on the NURSA website. So if you wanna go back and reference things from the chat, you'll be able to easily do that from there. So there is a question that Kevin posed on social media, plat what social media platforms can departments use to share and stay connected with student employees? Um, would that would that need to be vetted or monitored? We used to use Facebook, but now that's for grandparents, as our 18 to 25 year olds think. Stacy, since we are um, uh, going to be able to uh, access the the chat um, later, I'd encourage everybody that's on here if you've got links or resources, post them in there and that way we can refer to them later and have a chance to go back and look them up later and see which ones work for us and, and things like that. Oh, group me is a big one.
And Kevin is offering some resources to share. So y'all need to hit him up for those. Yeah, Stacey, just so you know, we've been really big on the, obviously the, our Row and Thrive initiative, which is our well-being. But I think it's so important now that we don't see students face to face. And so we're doing a bi-weekly newsletter. And I think, you know, they had said maybe the first message could just be hitting it in the nail saying that, you know, it is a tough time for everybody because it goes to employees and students and just, you know, talking about how it impacts. We have six dimensions of well-being and just talking about how overall well-being is impacted by this and how we can stay socially connected and, and purpose and emotional well-being and so you know that goes out to 21,000 individuals and we usually get about a 50 or 60 percent open rate which is great for a MailChimp or coastal constant contact but I think it's really important now that and more than ever in the virtual environment especially for people that won't thrive in the virtual environment how we can still give uh, give them value in student affairs or whatever units that you serve to let them know that don't be afraid to reach out to your professors or your employees or advising just so we can do everything we can to make you feel good and feel successful in the classroom and outside the classroom still. Kevin, everyone wants your email address. So going back to kind of the heart of what we were here for today, which is really thinking about how do we take care of ourselves during this time, is there any final advice or tips that you have for each other that you'd like to share? And I'll almost frame this, um, I don't know how many of you listen to a bunch of different podcasts, I'm sure a lot of you do. Um, but there is one woman and after she interviews, any interview she's doing, she always ends her podcast by saying, like, what is saving your life right now? That's like her final question to folks. And I find it really powerful and also really intriguing just because you never know, like kind of what is helping people get through. And I think saving your life can be kind of dramatic language, but I think I'd love to hear from you guys in whatever way um you'd want to share as to like what is that thing or is there a thing right now that's kind of keeping you grounded and sane um i personally would say eating healthy and trying my best to stay active even though we're kind of stuck inside eating good and making sure that i'm putting good things into my body helps me to feel more grounded mentally, um, spiritually, and emotionally, and just taking the time to reflect on the day, journaling, and things like that. That is awesome. For me, it's been just having that motivation to get a couple of big projects is done and knowing that I want to be stronger coming out of this than I was before. So making sure that I'm still working out, that I'm do making those goals that I had, um, both short term and long term. So I'm very fortunate, it's Catherine, hey. Um, I'm very fortunate that I still get to go to the pool and add chemicals and check in on the pool. So I actually do get to leave my house every once in a while. Um, but one thing that I've noticed, I have some friends that are not necessarily in the field, but are definitely having a lot more mental breakdowns because they're such extroverts and they don't have any um, contact with people either their own age or their coworkers, other than some of their Zoom meetings. Um, so one thing that I started to do for one of my friends because she's struggling a lot was I just sit on Zoom or on FaceTime with her and both of us are just working, almost as if we were working side by side. Um, and it's given her a little bit more of a mental release of I'm alone staring at a wall at home instead of where she was, which was working with a lot of other people in the same 
space. Um, so that has definitely helped. So for me, it has helped me personally being like, oh, I'm helping someone else while I'm totally fine working at home. But for her, it's given her that release of someone who is an extrovert being able to see other people have that hearing someone else working has re just really helped her a lot. That's awesome, Catherine. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? Hi, um, Michael Migliero, University of Alabama. Um, I will say that um, for me, what's really challenging um, is that like we haven't gotten back into a routine at UA. Um, we're on an extended spring break still. So my classes haven't resumed, I'm, I'm an undergraduate, but the one thing that's kind of getting me through it is we just got a new puppy. So kind of, he's the thing that kind of keeps me in some sort of routine, kind of getting up with him and he makes sure that I don't just sleep in all the time. There's a lot of good stuff in the chat box. My dog and staying active. Anna said, talking to those I love on a daily basis and staying connected, breathe in, breathe out, repeat. I find myself taking a lot of deep breaths. I'm, I'm a shallow breather and I need deep breathing to calm down. The window seat next to my desk is a light, the window next to my desk is a lifesaver. Jennifer, your dog has an awesome name, but my dog Beyonce and working out and Zoom calls. Also, all the free things that people are offering during this time. I tried salsa dancing and calligraphy. I know if anybody ever wanted to do boutique fitness, this is the time. You can do Peloton, you can do Orange Theory, you can do Core Power Yoga, all of it for free right now. Um, judgment-free virtual happy hours, focused on being social and Google Hangouts. Ken, we would never judge you for a happy hour. Um, FaceTime with friends and family makes me feel more connected during this time. Fortunately, we are still working and supplying clients with fitness equipment for their homes, dumbbells, kettlebells, and the like. It's taking my mind, um, making my mind sharp and happy to support my clients staying healthy and strong during this time. If you need anything, Will has provided his email address. Will, we need to talk offline because I've gone to Target twice to get some new dumbbells and all the dumbbells are sold out at Target. So that and the toilet paper. Rise Together podcast by Rachel Hollis and Raise Your Game podcast by Alan Stein Jr. Awesome. Well, I really think that there, that you guys have provided a lot of great, um, hopefully you got a lot of good tips and insight as to things that you can do to prioritize your well-being during this time. I just want to reiterate that this is an important time for you to take care of yourselves um, and to take care of those in your household and those around you and do your part in the social distancing world that we live in right now. Um, but appreciate everyone's time. And if you have any questions, I'll just shoot my email in the bottom of this chat box. But um, it was great connecting with everyone. Hey, Stacy, do we need to hit the save button for the chats to save the chat or is it going to be posted somewhere? So you don't have to do it. It's going to be saved. But should you want to do it for your own well-being, then you can do it. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks everybody for being here today.